tis the season for entertaining. And we have five scrumptious appetizers that will take your party to the next level. Oh, these are gonna make you the host. Or hostess. With the most. Or mostess. <laughs> Did you say mimosa? I'm not <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've got a lineup of appetizers. Oh that are, you're just gonna, they're amazing, they're they so are great. Amazing. All right, so let's get started with recipe number one, bacon parmesan gougere. These little puffed balls of pastry are addictively delicious. And they are ideal for serving guests. That's it. They are super and ideal. I can pop them all in my they mouth. They are so good. I, I see how them. many I can get in my mouth. I know, I've, <laughs> I've watched you do that. All right, I'm gonna get started. So we've got a half a cup of water that we've got pouring into a medium-sized saucepan over medium heat. I got a half a cup of milk, and then we're going to add four tablespoons of unsalted butter. I love it. And then we've got, we cooked up some bacon that we're gonna, I'm gonna talk yes, about here in just a minute. bacon! And I, I'm using the rendered grease from that because you know why, bacon. Bacon grease! Is, is delicious. <laughs> um, so, all right. And it's French cooking, so you got butter, grease, and, and cream <laughs> or milk. Yeah, it's good and butter. <laughs> These are so good. So the way we did all, uh, the bacon, you can do this way in advance. I just, I, I got six slices, <clears throat> excuse me, six slices that I roughly chopped throw them in my cast iron skillet, whatever skillet you got, cook it until it gets nice and crispy, and then I just used a, a slotted spoon to remove them onto a, towel, a paper towel lined plate, and then I just transferred that grease into a heat proof uh, bowl, and that's all that, that, need, that was needed. So now this has come to a simmer. <laughs> this happened very, very quickly. And then you gave those a rough chop. I, oh, I all gave them a rough, a rough chop. chop. Oh, yeah, that, that's and, I did that, and then we have this. Yeah. And then we have some Parmesan. So you can't do bacon Parmesan pops, or gougères, the French call them, or I like to call them gougères I know, you as well. just like to say that. <laughs> I love a gougère. Uh, is bacon and Parmesan. So we've got some Parmesan cheese that we, uh, that I grated. I like doing grated, like grating my own Parmesan because, I don't know, it feels like it tastes better. I think they put a, a additives or something in bagged Parmesan. In like, pre-shredded, pre-shredded cheese. He's talking about shredding yeah, I shredded from, my, a, from I'm a block. I'm showing them exactly. I know, that's I right, right, right. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I shredded about a cup and a half. Okay, good. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to use gonna put the that cup and then later. we're going to top it. All right. Yeah. So now I'm going to add some seasonings. I've got a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of sugar, a little sweet and savory, and then a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Yum. Oh, God, this really is going that to is going to town. It Chris. is going to town. I know. And then I've got a <laughs> teaspoon of dried oregano, and then I'm going to put in some salt because we need some salt in that. Yum. Oh, doesn't that smell good? Okay. Wow. Now this is really cool. This is. This is what we're about to make is called a choux pastry. Um, I believe it's that very is French. Very, very French. And um, <laughs> this is, I, I loved it. You use the, it's the same kind of pastry when you're making, say, eclairs or these puff pastries. Um, so you yes. put a, that's a quarter and a cup of all purpose flour that I put in. And then very quickly, you just want it's to so stir. It's so weird. It's a weird dough to me. It is. It is. A weird, it's a weird <laughs> dough to me, too. And it's going to feel very, very thick and very, very sticky, which it is. Um, but that's normal. That's what that's what you want. Wow. And um, it's going to so interesting. It's going to start coming together. Isn't that wild? It is wild. And so now I'm going to just continue to, to stir this. It, it's going to feel weird because it's so thick. But this is right. This is the way you want it to look. Yeah. Because uh, then we're going to thin it out with some eggs in a little bit. But cook this until you get an internal temperature of around 175 degrees and that takes usually about anywhere from five to say eight minutes. Okay, that's beautiful. That I is, love it. That is some show dough. Show dough. <laughs> show dough. <laughs> yes, yes, wait. Um, anyway, so we, what we did, we continued just to uh, cook that in, in that pan and um, until we got an internal temperature of 175 degrees. That took, oh, I'd say. It was actually, one, it's from 170, 170 to 175. 175. Yeah. As long as you're in the 170 range, you're good. This was 170. Yeah, so now you don't want this. So now we're going to, we've moved on to our blender. I mean, our mixer, <laughs> sorry, not our blender. And we're going to add that into the uh, bowl there. And we've got eggs. And so you don't want to curdle those or scramble those eggs. So you need to wait about 10 minutes for it to cool down, generally to like 150, 145, you're good. OK, I've got this on uh, just medium low. And I'm going to add four eggs. But I'm not going to add the next one until this one, until each one is fully incorporated. Okay, so now, now you see it's one. starting to look more like 
batter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so, so good. So now we're just gonna add this Parmesan cheese that's nicely incorporated. Oh, this is, wow. The flavor oh. of this is just through the roof delicious. And then we've got all this fabulous bacon because bacon makes everything better. Wow. And then I like some fresh herbs. This is optional, but I love, the, uh, this is a tablespoon, uh, tablespoon of chopped chives. It just adds another depth of flavor. And uh, we are <laughs> good. Amazing. So now you see this is a really thick, sticky dough. And when it bakes, we've got our oven preheated to 400 degrees. Um, so we find that a, a pastry bag is the easiest way to do this. Um, yes. Just get yourself an inexpensive pastry just pastry bag from the store, and that's um, what we did. And, and that's what, and then <laughs> because the, you can pipe it in, and it makes it, it makes them even in size, and it's just easier to handle. But you could also do this with just you could get a spoon and just you want to do just about the size of like a golf ball. Um, okay, so the yeah, this is some sticky dough. It's sticky dough, but that's <laughs> it's going to make it good. I love it. All right, I'm gonna just throw this in this bag, and then we're gonna start piping it. Okay, okay, good job. All right. I all got right. it all in this little baggie here. Uh -huh. I just wanted everybody to show that. I, so I got two baking sheets here and I, out, I lined them with parchment paper and I used a little cookie dough um, cutter. That's, I think that's an inch and a half. It's an inch and a half. Inch and a half. And I just drew circles around where I want to put my dough and I turned it over because we don't want to get any ink on our dough. <laughs> that just helps you make sure, again, it, all of this helps you get, get uniform size. Um, you don't have to do that, but it does help. Um, just right. find something that's about this size and uh, you're good. Now, and then, then that tip on that bag yeah. is a half inch tip. You I'm wanna, trying to do this without getting messy. Yeah, well, good luck. Yeah. It, it's sticky, but he's gotten really good at piping. All right, so I'm just gonna Mr. start calling pipe. you Piper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to go about, fill that circle in, but I want to go up a little bit too, like a, about an inch up, inch and a half up. Yeah, yeah. Then there, we're gonna, we go. there you go. Ooh, oh, oh, there boy. you go. Because then we're going to come back and uh, with, with a moistened finger, we're going to kind of flatten them down and get the right shape. Yes, there we go. All right. All right, okay, so the last then, one. You'll see I'm helping hold down the parchment paper. If you don't have Get a, your loon. If you don't have a loon, I don't have a helper. <laughs> what you can do is this stuff is so sticky, just put it underneath the four corners of the parchment paper and it'll, it'll pretty close to hold it in place. Yes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet our fingers and we're just gonna kind of press Push them down, that down. Just a little bit. So it makes a, a nice- There we go, look at that. Gougere uh, shape. And then I'm gonna come in behind um, and just brush a little egg wash. This is a Sorry, one egg, off. one egg that we put uh, about a tablespoon of water, and um, this will just help get them nice and golden. Okay. All right. And now the did you get that one? I, I think I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo, look at these little babies. Oh, they're gonna be so good. And so now, this what this made about twenty, right? Yes. Um, you're gonna get anywhere from 20, depending on the size, um, but you're gonna get about twenty to twenty-four. Then we've got that extra uh, Parmesan grated that uh, we yeah. say. Oh, I just that's all right. It can what? Go. Oh, I kind of got it on the. But that's. You kind of got, got it on the, the baking, on the baking sheet. That's that okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it get all crispy. Have a oh. Parmesan crisp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So like I said before, we preheated our oven to 400 degrees. These are only going to go about 20 to 25 minutes. So they're going to puff slightly, get nice and brown, and then we eat them. Yay! Oh, the smell is so good. So, so good. So we let these go for 25 minutes, kept that oven shut, and then I turn off the oven, and then I got a wooden spoon, and just leave the door kind of cracked open so they can hang out in there, let some of that steam that's on the and inside escape. And let the escape. crust just kind of get yep. good and delicious. Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, oh. oh, these are so beautiful. Oh, wow. I mean, these are, I mean, these are so oh. great for entertaining. They're such a crowd pleaser. Oh my, those look so they good. They really do. I'm so excited. And they've been, they're not extremely hot now. So they've been they, cooling off a little yeah, bit. They've been cooling off. So I'm going to give you them. Oh yeah. You can serve these, um, you know, they're great just like this. But you could serve them with a little honey mustard dip if you want. Look at um, that. Ooh, I'd love a little honey mustard dip. And they pair beautiful. I mean, they're great for entertaining. Uh, they, they really, the, the taste complements uh, champagne. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now you're talking. Now we're talking. All right, uh, I'm going to just crack this open to make yeah. sure. Oh, you guys. Oh, look at that. And they should have a little bit of a hollow feel to them. Oh, yeah. They could eat. Oh. Yeah. 
You can oh. see all the bubbles here, the, the little the oh, steam beautiful. parchment. Yes. Yours looks great. How did yours do? Here, let me try another one. Oh yeah, there we go. There's, there they are. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. They, okay, smell, okay, they okay. just smell so good. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> That is cocktail party perfection. I would never leave <laughs> I know. the party. I know. Those are amazing, and they're 100% oh, wait, 100,000% Luna approved. Yay! <laughs> oh, Lord, those are good. Okay, now on to recipe number two Southern Crab Beignets. These delectable balls of yumminess are filled with crab and seasonings and then fried to perfection. Mmm, made even better with a little white rubelade on top. I'll <laughs> tell you, oh my gosh, this is a this is a showstopper of an appetizer. I know, we don't make it often, so I'm excited. I know, I know, it's, it is great. Okay, so we've got two, well no, let me talk about the star of the Oh dish. yeah. This is our, this is 16 ounces of white crab meat. Uh, you can, what I would recommend doing is get good quality Quality, you know, open the wallet and spend the money on getting some good quality. You don't have to get the jumbo lump because that's really expensive. But um, I usually go somewhere like in between. And um, you're going to want to pick it over because sometimes there may be a little cartilage and there may be some leftover shells. Just pick it over a couple <laughs> times and, and discard that um, if, if you come across any. Okay. All right. So yum yum yum. Yeah. So now we're going to. I've got two eggs in a nice a large bowl that I'm going to start whisking until it gets nice and yum. frothy. Yum, yum, yum. All right, so while he's making that, let's make some white roumelade. Let's or roumelade or roumelade. You always tell me I pronounce it. Oh, right. tomato, <laughs> tomato, whatever. <laughs> all right, well, it all starts with a cup of mayonnaise. Then I'm going to throw in a quarter cup of chopped scallions. Then a quarter cup of onions that have also been chopped. And then a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. And then I'm going Are you to. Sure? <laughs> I, 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 uh, I think so. <laughs> if I can talk today, I got to say Worcestershire and talk. All right. And then I've got a, ha a zest of half a lemon. And I'm just going to just. Do oh boy. Yeah, I know. Wes this Wesley Zesting. Oh, that's all right. It's it's nice because it collects it right here. It does. And then I'm just gonna drop <laughs> it in. Okay, hold on. Half. So you want to make sure when you're when you add these uh, chopped scallions and the chopped onions, I definitely would say get a good fine chop on them. Get spend some time to really yeah. get them because you don't want them too chunky because um, you're not obviously gonna cook them. Um, and oh yeah, and then we've got the, then juice. the juice of half a lemon as half well. Lemon, yeah. This is such a delicious uh, sauce. I mean, we use it on, on so many um, items, but it really goes great with these crab <laughs> It's beignets. so good, you guys. It's insanely good. All right, and I'm just going to mix this all together. Fabulous. Let's see. Hold on, Chris. Let me I just know. get this done. All right, let's see. Oh, you guys, look at that. Oh, that's good. That is the good stuff. This is good. This is so good with like even just a little bit of toast. <laughs> it is. I'm telling you, it's super delicious. All right, okay. y'all. I'm going to take this and I'm going to refrigerate it for about a half an hour so that it gets all that everything gets. You don't want to do it less than that. Half exactly. Hour. I'd right. even do it overnight if you want and to. And that's why Rumalad. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay, so I thought you were going to stick it in the fridge. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, so now I've just, you see that got, kind of got uh, frothy and a little pale yellow. That's what we want. So now we're going to add a cup of good quality mayonnaise. Wesley laughs at me because I always say good quality, but you know. <laughs> You'd want to use the good quality yes. stuff. Okay, and then we've got, I love this. This is two tablespoons of stone ground mustard. You can find like some Cajun stuff type, just really flavorful yellow or brown mustard. Um, it's really, really great. So now I'm going to start to mix this together. And do you need a whole juice of a whole lemon or? We're gonna, we need a t two teaspoons. So that, depending on how juicy, to, hold on. Oh, all right. I know, I know, you're getting excited. <laughs> we wanna get this fully incorporated. <laughs> This is a, this is a, I'm going to tell you, this is a recipe that we adapted from the amazing chef Donald Link. He is a Louisiana chef oh. that I think is one of the best in the world. Yeah, he's and got a couple of restaurants down in New Orleans that are just phenomenal. delicious. Super Butcher, delicious. if you can get to it. Yeah. Okay, so That's give the me the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> so a little juice. Yeah. 
All right. There Ooh, you these go. are that's tough good. one. Okay, now do you that, want two? Yeah, do All the right. other half. We need like two. That's about a teaspoon, so we're going to do another teaspoon here. All right. So we want a total of two teaspoons. Okay. Very good. Okay, okay that's perfect. Okay, now I'm going to keep on mixing this together. Keep now on keeping on. Some very finely chopped red onion, and then we've got some very finely chopped scallions. Oh, this is already looking so good. Man, I'm, I'm doing my job. I appreciate it that. I appreciate that you're doing <laughs> such a good job. Okay, now we've got just a pinch of cayenne. If you like a like it a little heat, then you can do more than that. Um, we've got a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt and about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just gonna keep on folding these mm. flavors in. Wow. I know, we haven't made these in a while and I'm thinking, why haven't we not made I these? I know, well, we, we're making everything else. They really are a showstopper though. I mean, we've had we've had so many people say that they've I made know, this. yeah, that's and the just, great part about it. That it, it's so impressive. The yeah. only thing is that because they do come together very, very quickly uh, when you fry them, and then after they sit for a while, you can keep them warm in the um, oven, but I would recommend waiting until just before your guests yeah. to fry them up. Now that was a cup of panko breadcrumbs. We love panko. Um, they're Japanese breadcrumbs. They have just a little more texture to them. And um, mm. now oh. this is blue crab, right? This is. This yeah, is so if you it. can find blue. It's the white meat off a of blue crab. Yeah. <laughs> blue crab is like very prominent down in the Gulf of Mexico near uh, Louisiana off the bottom. Down in the bay. Yeah. Oh, doesn't that look good? Wow. So now what we need to do, I know it's insane. <laughs> we need to um, let this firm up. So we're gonna stick this in the fridge. With the room a lot. With the room a lot. You can do that, you could do this um, up to a day in advance, uh, but you definitely want this to chill because it's a pretty loose, they're loose. I don't know why he calls them beignets, um, but I've gotten some grief on that. But they are, they're kind of they're kind of like soft in the middle and well, crisp on the outside. A ball, yeah. ball, beignet, bee, yeah. bent. All yeah. right, put that in the fridge. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna get our fryer we're gonna fry them up. Yeah. Okay, so we've pulled out our spaceship, <laughs> also known as our deep fryer. It usually is on my side. I know, but I we know. We want people to see the frying That's action. right. So <laughs> you can also do this in a large skillet with just some um, oil, like a half inch of oil. Um, but now you see the consistency that. of that. When, we la when you last saw it, it was pretty soft. Now it's gonna That's be- That's great. Yeah, it's gonna be able to form some balls. So yes. let's do that. We've got our oil heated to 350 degrees. And Chris is gonna guide me on how large these you should know, be. You know, you don't wanna oh, make them size. too giant. What I, do you think? I, yeah, that's good. I, uh, I typically say around the size of like a golf ball um, is good. A little smaller. I think. Maybe a little smaller, yeah. Um, and this, oh my gosh, they smell so good. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they fry it very quickly. Now I will say. And I'm just gonna do it, I don't wanna do it too tight. I wanna just yeah, kinda just exactly. loosely form that ball. Yeah. Isn't that cute? So <laughs> these, you can well, see, that's a big one. this Sorry. comes together very, very, you know, once, you can even form these balls and keep them in the fridge. I, I, we've had lots of people who have made these over the years, and um, the thing I get from the folks <laughs> is that they're they're definitely best when they're served pretty soon out of the, the fryer. So um, go ahead and get all your prep work done, and then maybe have your fryer or your oil ready to go just before guests arrive. You can keep them warm in the fr in the in an oven; they're still going to be delicious. But they start to lose; they're not as crispy and as crunchy. Um, and okay, all right, we're gonna do the crispy and crunchy. Crispy and crunchy. Okay. All right, I'm excited. All right, here we go. Now I'm just gonna drop these. Ooh, Oops, be careful. Go. I know, I know. Chris. I know, I should probably be doing this Yeah, with do a it spoon. really, get it closer. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Lower it in there with a spoon. I know. Here, just do this. Just okay. drop it in there. No, we're good, we're okay. good. Okay, we'll save them, I know. No be, kids or dogs. I know, be, be careful. Around. When you're cooking with a loon, you never know what you're gonna get. Hey, you're the one dropping them in there. So this, like I said, these do not take long, just to um, just a couple minutes and when they get golden brown, they're ready. Yes, and I'm gonna continue to make these balls. Okay, oh, <gasps> look at those. Those are perfect. They're beautiful, they're so, I don't know, they're just so elegant and, uh, oh, and be wow. careful. I'm they're gonna tender. Do, I'm gonna do this. There you um, go. They, they are tender. Um, I probably should do them the other way so <laughs> everyone can get a nice view of them. Y'all, that is what is so fabulous. Oh, those are almost like crab cakes. They are. They are. They remind me a lot of crab oh, cakes. Oh, I love that. Okay. All right. So that's beautiful. So you you can keep those warm in an, an oven while you do up the rest of these. But like I said, it comes together very quickly. All right, we're gonna cook these up and then we get to eat. Isn't that just so elegant and so that's gorgeous? It just makes you want to dive into it. And here's yes. here's your rumelade that we did. That's oh. 
little scallions on top. A little white remoulade, um, I always say. Remoulade, remoulade. Oh, here, I'll serve myself. Yeah. Oh, look at this that. This is finger food you at guys, its best. One more. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, I'm so <gasps> excited. Yay! These are, oh. I, I love the texture. I <laughs> love it. Okay. Now right, you can, you can little... plunge if you want, or you can just put I some I think I'm going to smear. I think I'll do that too. A little smear. A little smear. You know, you brought, you got me this, you gave me this fork, but I don't think I'm going to use it. Oh, you're going to just, yeah, you, these are, pick it up and eat yeah. it. Yeah, why not? Pick it up, boy. Oh my God. Holy moly. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Wesley is particular about thinking Very. too fishy, and sometimes he's not too sure about crab. Look at that, you guys. Is that not mind-blowingly good? <gasps> the mustard in there, the no. crab, and, and the, the, and the and that roumelade. Oh. I'm telling you, and the texture. Mm. Oh! You're right. You guys. It's, like a, it's like a crab cake ball. Wow, you gotta make these. These are 100%, actually, let's say 100,000% loon approved. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, moving on to recipe number three. Sausage, bean, and spinach dip. No party would be complete without a delicious dip. And this loaded warm dip does not disappoint. Oh, and cheesy. <laughs> it's cheesy. Oh, I'm telling you, it is, it is it's so good. so good, you guys. All right, we've got, I've got a tablespoon of olive oil that I've heated up in my nice large skillet here. If you have a, uh, we're gonna, this is gonna end up in the oven. We're gonna bake it. Um, so if you could do this, I like to serve this in a, like a dish. It just feels like that's the way you should serve it. But Wesley asked me the other day, he said, well, why don't you just do it like in an oven ready dish, like a cast yeah. iron skillet? Which you can do. You can totally do. But I, I don't know. I, this feels, it, feels like a, it should be in a dish. It's a cute dish. It is a cute it. dish. And it's this dip, you guys, you'll never make another dip. It is so amazing. Yes. And what did we say? It has sausage and beans and spinach. And a lot of other stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm going to let this cook until it gets nice and soft, which is about three to five minutes. Okay, so that's nice and soft. Now I've got four cloves of garlic that I've minced, and we're just gonna saute this until it gets aromatic. Perfect. All right, so we got sausage. We're gonna use hot Italian sausage. Mm. Um, you can sometimes find it uh, in bulk, like not in the links, but it's kind of hard to find. So what we do is we just get the links and take the casings off and then just crumble it up, and here you go. And there you go. And there you go. And this is a pound, how that's much? That's a pound. So a pound. That's a pound. So you could, we like Wesley said, I don't know, there's just something about this dip that the hot sauce, it's not hot, Italian, you've never had it, it's not super it's not hot. It's not really hot. It's yeah. just got a little bit of a zing to it. But you could also use sweet sausage, sweet Italian sausage, mild, um, whatever you like. Uh, but okay, well, so we're going to continue cooking this. Um, I'm going to continue breaking it up until it's no longer pink. Oh boy, I just, this, this dip, wow. we don't make it enough. I haven't made it in a while. and. It's definitely one of our more popular ones on the blog. Okay, that, that cream cheese. I know, it's, I know, I know. That's when you know. Okay, that's going to be a good dip. Um, that's eight ounces of just good old cream cheese that that's been sitting at room temperature. Good um, old cream cheese. It's good old. I love to say that. Um, okay, we're going to stir this till it gets nice and melted. And I'm going to go over here. I've got our our baking dish dish here, and I'm going to get a nice coat of butter on the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're preheating our, uh, we've preheated it to 400 degrees. Y'all, this dip. It is always a, <laughs> one of those ones that it's, people are like, what is that? And then they're like, uh, I want that recipe. Yeah, Chris makes a pasta that I love so much. It's called, uh, uh, what is it? Like country a style. Country style pasta, which is with sausage, spinach, and cheese, yes. okay. and beans. The, speaking of beans, <laughs> this is uh, drained cannelloni beans, 15 ounce can. I'm going to put, this is four ounces of mature spinach that I have ta taken the stems off and roughly chopped it. Very mature. Very, they're, it's just, they're so mature acting, <laughs> I like them. Well, I mean, you could use baby, uh, baby spinach, but I just prefer cooking with, um, the mature spinach. I just make sure make sure that it's washed. Something even when you get them from the store and it looks like they're clean. There's little 
pieces of dirt in there, so you want to be careful of that. Yeah, clean your spinach. Clean folks. your spinach, please. <laughs> so now we're going to just cook this until that. It may look like, wow, that's too much spinach. It'll cook down, it wilts down, and then, uh, then it's getting close to dip time. Wow. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Wow. It's so great. <laughs> um, okay, now we're going to come on over here. Let's see, we've got our... Um, our pan. A baking dish. Baking dish. There you go. Look at that. Okay. Come on. Come on. There we go. Kretz. Oh, watch out. I don't want to get it on there. All right. Oh, wow. It's so Woo! good. <laughs> it's got a lot I'm of dying. what we call Tuscan flavors. Oh. Um, what's good. And I don't think, did I mention that we, it's got sun-dried tomatoes Those, in it? We put it. Uh, we saw you throw them in there. We, I know you did. Well, did and you I think it? I was too busy talking about something else, <laughs> as I tend to do. Um, you that, guys, that was that. The, a cup of sun-dried tomatoes that have been julienned or roughly chopped. Then we've got, here, let's do this together. Oh, sure. We're going to top it with cheese. So this is a cup of just good old shredded mozzarella. And then I've got a half a cup, half a cup of Parmesan. Wow. <laughs> Well, Chris, you're getting in my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All right. And um, here, you do the rest of that. Okay. Because we do want to eat this before tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, this only doesn't take long. Um, you just want to get it nice and bubbly. Just keep, kind of keep an eye on it. Typically, like 15 to 20 minutes, and then it's, it's good to go. Yay! Oh, I love the smell of this dip. I love a good dip. <laughs> we were taking it out a little early. No, I... I it, like I said, it depends on your oven. No, yeah. I, 5, 5, 12 to 15 oh, minutes, right. you know. It's so anyway. <laughs> wow, that looks delicious. That does look delicious. And incredibly hot. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> ideally you will you would let this cool before you serve it to your guests, but I'm gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna, doesn't that look so good? Just blow on it. <gasps> yeah, I mean. That is so good. All right, I'm gonna give you some. Yes, give Let's me. talk about those for Oh yeah, we days. made some crostinis. I just got uh, a baguette, a French baguette, sliced it, put some, uh, brushed some oil on it, olive oil, and then I toasted them. And they're perfect And they're for so these. good. They're, they're, you need something sturdy to <gasps> Chris, watch out. To scoop oh. that up. That look amazing. Now obviously Hold you- Hold on, I gotta clean up. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> so obviously you could just serve it like this right out of the dish mm. Um, mm. and let people then serve themselves. Um, however oh, you want to do look it. Look at that, you guys. Oh. We're stalling for time a little yeah. bit. So we don't... <laughs> I can you tell. I know. Here's a, there you go. Oh good, okay. All right, I'm going to get into this crostini. Put this on here. Oh, you guys. It's just got all of, so many great oh. flavors. Look at that cheese. Oh, forget about Spinach. it. Spinach. Okay, I'm gonna have to blow on this, Chris. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is molten lava yeah. cheese. <laughs> oh. This may be a, mount, um, a roof of the mouth burner. We ready? Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. It's, I love it because it's different. It's not your everyday dip. Um, it's just so lovely the flavor. <laughs> Can you speak? That is, oh. That is like, you know, like my favorite topping pizza, like with, with Italian sausage and spinach and, oh. I'm telling you, like and that. it's a dip. It's like t our oh, Tuscan chicken, yes. that we do, except for it was sausage. Wow, you guys, look at this. I'm just, it's so warm. All right, all right, all right. it's so good. It's delicious. <laughs> we we got to get moving. <laughs> this is so good. This is 100,000% Luna Proof. Yes. Okay. Now on to recipe number four: seared shishito peppers. These little gems are always a party favorite. Absolutely delicious in their simplicity. But be warned, legend has it that one in every 12 packs a punch. <laughs> That's right. I always get that 12 I know one. you do, you do. I, I had one just the other day, and, they, and they're, they're fun. They're, they're not yeah. overly spicy, but yeah. they do. But like okay. on the, I think it's the Scoville scale. Yeah. Um, they're like a 200 and yeah. like a jalapeno. They're, they're like spicy, five. yeah. A jalapeno is like 5,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're beautiful. They're cute 
cute little guys. And so I've got a tablespoon of olive oil. And all you, it's so easy. This is one of those things. Oh, I see one turning on a little there. Yeah. If they if they're red, that means they're ripening and they're gonna they're, they're gonna, gonna be hotter. So don't gonna use them. Pack more <laughs> punch. But Chris uh, decided to throw one in there just why for not? just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is one of those things that, like we said, they're great at a party. Everyone, it, it's fun to do because you can do that once you know everyone's there at the party. Everyone kind of gathers around the skillet and they're like, Ooh, yeah, that's kind of cool. One. That's kind of fun. Let's see yeah. which one gets the hot one. Yeah, yeah. So and and they're so easy. Okay. So that's so the simplicity is basically those uh, a little lemon. Or this is lime. lemon. This is lime zest and some sea salt and some, and some shallots. shallots. It's so easy. It's so all I'm, about these delicious peppers. So I'm just gonna get this. Lime ready for you. This lime zest. Okay. How much do you want? The whole the zest of a whole lime. Okay. So what you you do that, and I'm gonna keep on just um, do sautéing these until they get nice and blistered. Yes. And then we throw in some shallots, and they're ready to eat. Fabulous. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I like it, it. There's something about it also that you you just you can't stop watching it. That's what like your guests do. Yeah. So now you see, and they kind of like sear a little bit at you. They hiss they, they, a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like they crackle. They crackle. All right. So now you don't want to add your shallots, and if you don't like shallots, you can leave them out. Um, but I think they add a nice little flavor enhancer. But don't put them in until they're almost done, because they because I've got this on very high heat. Um, so we've got that's the zest of the lemon. The you want some of this? Yeah. Get, yeah, some uh, of the salt. You can take it with you. Okay. You can take it with you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so now we're going to just finish this off. Oh yeah. Doesn't that look great? I loved it. So these are Japanese. He was originated in Japanese. I think they grow in the California now too. The shishito peppers. The shishito peppers. Uh, but a few years ago, they were the, all the craze. <laughs> the seared shishito peppers. <laughs> and and um, like Chris said, you know, one out of twelve. So you're always at like if you're at a dinner yeah. party or something, yeah. and everybody's like, should who's gonna get the I hot know, one? I know. And Wesley always would. Uh, um, <laughs> maybe not. I'm feeling good this time. I know. So um, Here, you me, you and you it, it. these you may be wondering where in the world do I get shishito peppers? They're they're wow. pretty easy to find nowadays. Um, I you can definitely get them if you have access to a Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's has them. Um, and, but I even guys. found them at our local grocery store. They're Look just, at those. I'm just kidding. And you can get definitely them order them online. There you go, get this. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna okay. hit it with a little more the lime. The lime is just such a refreshing little juxtaposition with to the uh, little like, heat from the peppers. And then the salt is Yes! Kind of, the salt! And they kind of they're they're weird. They look a little weird. <laughs> like sometimes I think they look beautiful, sometimes they don't, but alright, Chris. <laughs> okay, here we go. Grab yours and I'll go second. And you just eat them whole? Oh, that one looks hot. I know. <laughs> All right, I've got I got a spicy one. I've got one right it here. Was super spicy. All right, you ready? Yeah. Mm. Oh, that was good. Mm. Mm. I didn't get a hot one. I didn't either. Oh, that's so yeah. flavorful. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe those little pe I mean, there's a little bit of heat. If oh, someone absolutely hates heat, then they Oh, will. no, these are so, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna <clears throat> press my luck. I didn't do it. Wow. Yeah, that is so, so, uh, These so are addictive, they're so are. good. And they're also 100,000% Luna Proof. Yes! <laughs> All right, people, on to recipe number five. Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. You heard that right. These egg rolls are stuffed with Philly cheesesteaks. What? <laughs> They're crunchy on the outside and beefy and cheesy on the inside. The ultimate in crowd-pleasing appetizers. They are the ultimate. I, there is Unbelievable. no doubt. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Yes, yes. Okay, so now we've got, I've got my skillet here. We're gonna make that Philly cheesesteak filling. So um, are I we will, gonna show the meat at all? Yeah, yeah, well, I'm gonna get, right. get this going. So let, let me- I always wanna jump to the I meat. I know, you're always talking. <laughs> I'm always about the meat. So I've got a nice large skillet here. I've got a tablespoon of olive oil, and this is a cup of chopped onion, like one medium onion that I chopped. And then this is a green bell pepper that I've seeded and uh, chopped. And that's about a cup. You could, sometimes you could, if you like your Philly cheesesteak with mushrooms in there, you could saute no. some mushrooms. <laughs> he says no. I don't even, uh, so my classic cheesesteak, what I love on uh, my cheesesteak yes. is just onions. Yes. And provolone. And provolone. Cheese. Yes. No cheese whiz? 
Whit. No, no, no wit. No wit whiz. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's no wit -wit. this is uh, the meat. <laughs> this is really there's that meat. This is really important. So, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm not gonna fondle it, but um, you, you want to get thin <laughs> slices. Um, so you can do that. You can ask your butcher uh, to to get you really thin slices. We did that once before, and he did it. It was thin, but it wasn't quite thin enough. And we made Philly cheesesteaks, and you all told us your meat's not thin your enough. Your meat's not thin so enough. So we like, well, I know, I know. So we tried another way, which worked really well. I got a nice ribeye steak. You just have to be really careful when you're doing this. Um, you can either do this with a nice sharp knife or with a mandolin. We got our, our trusty mandolin. I put some gloves on. You froze that steak. And first. then I, well, yeah. you're right. I froze it first. So get it nice and solid, uh, frozen, and then set it out for like an hour so it starts to, to defrost a little bit. Then, very, 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 I can't say very enough, carefully, scrape that across the yeah. mandolin and start getting those strips. If it, you have a loon, let the loon help. Definitely. You. A second person <laughs> to hold that mantle in place is, is definitely useful. And you just continue. You're not going to get all the way down because you don't want to cut your fingers. you got to be careful. Wear yes. protective there. And, um, but you're going to get, this is probably three quarters of a pound, close to a pound, um, just depending on the size of your steak. And then you've got that really nice thin meat. You can go ahead and give it another rough chop if you want. Um, yeah, but, do it. Yeah, because you want to get these ready for the egg roll. Well, the egg roll. So now, like in Philly cheesesteaks, you know, you've got like nice strips of meat and all, and that's delicious. Here, we want to have it a little bit. Um, we don't want it so. We want the meat easy to bite into. Right. Well, we needed a little more uh, what crumbly, I guess. Um, Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Um, I don't want to say mushy, but anyway, you'll see. We have a little trick for that. So I'm going to let these continue to cook till they get nice and soft, about another two minutes. And then we're going to add some more flavoring and cook that meat. Okay, now these are really nice. I like to almost caramelize the onions. I just think it gives such a depth of flavor. Now mm. I'm going to do a little trick that I love. This is a tablespoon of soy sauce. Yeah, we're doing a fusion of you know egg rolls and, and Philly. Philly, yo yo Philly. Yeah, but it really gives a nice <laughs> depth. <laughs> exactly, yo yo it gives a nice depth of flavor um, to, to this sauce. I just think it's so heavenly yes. and so delicious. All right, let's put this meat in here. Oh, I love it. Wow. Is there any a better sound or a better <laughs> smell? When we lived in New York City, when which was close to Philadelphia. Right. Well we moved to Jersey and we were really close to Philadelphia. Yeah, that's right. And so we would we would go into Philly just to get um, cheese Philly cheesesteaks. And, and I'm going to add just a little more salt to this just because I, these cheesesteaks, you don't like them a little yeah. on the salty side. Once you go into town, find yourself a restaurant. And I'm sure every restaurant has one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, wow, that's looking good. <laughs> that's looking, and the smell is off the charts. Woo! Okay, we're going to let this go just a little bit longer till it's fully cooked, and then we're going to show you a little trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It's so tempting just to eat all of this right now, but okay. <laughs> Give now, me a hoagie bun. So what makes it better <laughs> in the um, egg rolls is if it's a finer texture. That's the word I was trying to find earlier. Yes. So we just get out our trusty food processor and uh, just <laughs> give it a few pulses. You can do it with a knife, and you don't even have to do that. We just find the uh, the consistency is a little better. It's so okay. It's so that you can roll them up tight in that egg roll That's wrapper. Right. So I've got my oil here. We need oil. We're gonna deep fry these babies, and um, I'm gonna get this up to about 340. I'm not gonna do 350 on this because I don't want them to burn. I know. I'm taking forever. That's Sorry. Right. That's all right. Oh, y'all. <laughs> okay. Seriously, just give me something right now to eat this with. I know. <laughs> Oh, give me that spoon back though, Chris. I'll need that spoon. All right, y'all, I'm just gonna give this a, I don't wanna chop, like pulverize it. I just yeah, wanna- Yeah, you don't wanna turn it into mush. Yeah, I just want a quick pulse. That's fun, probably fun. best. That's great, that's fantastic. Perfect, perfect! Okay, All right. we're taking you on a full tutorial here <laughs> of the Philly cheesesteak egg roll. Exactly. All right, take that, Chris. Here we go. Get this in my little bowl here. We also have a recipe for just good old regular everyday uh, egg rolls that you guys would love too. But I mean, how can you go wrong with Philly cheesesteak? Okay, exactly. let me get that out of your way. There you go, take that. We're working as a team. Woohoo! We're egg rolling. We're egg rolling our troubles away. <laughs> yes. We got. Okay. 
So while he's doing that, while he, I'll just. No, I'm ready. I know. I just was going to say, so that's provolone ch uh, cheddar cheese. Sometimes I've done it where I just put the cheese in the meat mixture and just melt it all together. That works. Uh, Wesley prefers it if they're shredded. He's become quite the master at rolling these things together. Well, we'll see about that. So a lot of times <laughs> it's hard to find shredded provolone at, at the grocery store. So I just get a block of it from the deli and then I just shred it myself. Then I'm gonna, I, got, I put a layer of cheese down. I got my egg roll wrapper there. Yep. And I put a layer of cheese. Now I'm gonna put the meat in there. Mm. Try not to overstuff them because that's that's I'm, hard to do. Yes, that's, I know. I'm so terrible at that. Well, that's okay. I'd rather <laughs> overstuff Philly cheesesteak egg roll. I love saying that. <laughs> All right. I think that's enough. You definitely stuff that. <laughs> Don't, Chris. <laughs> just let me be. We're gonna each have one egg roll each. No. Here we go. All right. So now I got that. I just want to quickly brush the edges with a little water so it'll stick together. Okay. There we go. Okay. Then I'm gonna take this part here and kind of just compact it a little more get it in there there we go wonderful yeah yep yeah. then i'm gonna roll over here roll with a baby get that stuck in there i know i kind of overstuffed it but hey it's okay <laughs> and just fold this side under bring this side do the same get that in there okay oops there you go there you go there you go i'm doing it i'm doing it <laughs> and then you just roll it like that. And, and that water go. just helps yes. the, the, the skin of the, the wrappers Yay. stick. There you go. That's Cute beautiful. as a That's button. Great. All right, we're going to let our oil get up to about 340. We're going to roll up the rest of these, and then we fry them up. <laughs> Those are beautiful. Aren't those adorable? They really are. You've gotten to be quite good at rolling. <laughs> so this makes... Um, this one made about six. It makes six. We're just doing um, four uh, because, you know, that's all we're going to eat at the moment. Now, I've got my oil <laughs> we'll here. We'll freeze the other we'll freeze, two. yeah, yeah. Oh, it will get eaten. Okay, now we're doing this. Um, we are doing this two at a time just because you don't want to overcrowd your pan. You could do this in a deep fryer. You could do this... Um, just get, if you're going to do it like this, have your oil about three quarters of the way up. Get the kids and, uh, out of the room. Yeah, get the, get the kids, get the dogs, anyone who might run into this because it's, you know, it's hot oil. So uh, you got to be careful. But these don't take long. Yes. And they're just so beautiful. Oh. They take just a, a few minutes. Make sure. I don't like to have the oil so screeching hot because these things do tend to burn. Um, but anyway, they'll take about a few minutes and then they turn golden brown. We'll cook these up and then. We get to have the best egg roll <laughs> ever. Oh, these are beautiful. Those look gorgeous. So um, now just be super careful. Yeah. Because uh, you got hot oil everywhere. Now we like to drain these on a plate lined with paper towels. Oh, those are beautiful. Wow. That. I'm telling you guys, this is oh, unbelievable. Look at those. Okay, so now oh. we're gonna, I'm going to get my <laughs> oil back up to 340, and um, then we're going to cook these up. Yes, baby. And <laughs> then we're going to eat them. <laughs> The time has come. This is so Look awesome. at how gorgeous those I are. I know, I know. Um, I'll take eight of them. I know, you. I know. I, we should have made all of them. All right, I'm going to try and do this without. Oh. Oh, so juicy. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll take uh, all of those. Yeah, I know. Here. Look at you guys. I'm going to arrange it the way I like to see okay, it. Okay, you do that. Okay. Then I'm going to cut these. Oh, you guys. It's so. I. Oh, it's so cheesy and so beefy and so tender. <laughs> you all see that deliciousness? Now we now we love to it boost the flavor. Yes. So we've got a little. That's some just hot chili oil. It adds just a little depth of flavor. That's wonderful. I like to put a little around the yeah. plate. Yeah. And now this right here, we I put like this put in our. Go ahead. Then I like to put a little on here. Yeah. There this is a this is a mixture. I've got the recipe in the blog post. It's. Uh, Sour cream and mayonnaise that's equal parts mixed with a little bit of chili, chili powder <laughs> and uh, some garlic powder. And it it's just, delicious. It goes perfect with these things. Hold on, I gotta make sure I can get it out of there. Oh, yeah, All right, go. here we go. Oh my gosh, so you can get these egg rolls completely ready um, before you fry them. You can do that like days in advance. You can even <laughs> freeze them and, um, and then fry them right before your guests come over. Yeah. And then, uh, then a little bit of Oops. topper twister. Some little chives. Yes. You I guys, how cute is <laughs> That's super cute. It is my favorite. That's so cute. That's, I, I'm so excited. Right, Hopefully I, these have cooled down that I'm not oh, going to hurt they have. myself. They're so pretty. Look I, just at, I know. I don't want to mess them. it up. All right. Well, I'm going to put go. a little more my. Okay, there we go. All right. I'm going, going for in. it. Let's go yes. for it. Oh, I can perfect. Ooh, look at that crunch. Oh. 
Mm. Legendary. <laughs> you guys? That is... I'm speechless. <laughs> What do you think about that, loon? <laughs> Are you in seventh heaven? Burn. That, that's amazing. That is like, He's like do my favorite things. Like a, a chili, or chili pea steak, a Philly cheese steak. Are you gonna start crying? Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> that chili oil on there too, Chris. I know. All right. These are 300,000% Luna approved. Oh my Y'all, make these appetizers and people will love you. These are the, <laughs> I mean, throwing a party and giving people delicious appetizers is so much food and you should do it. Yes. And invite us. Yeah. We love you so much, everybody. Yay. Bye. Have a party. Party. <laughs>